Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Guys, you are in for a treat. This is one of those special, special films that only comes around once in a while. A film that should make me angry to my boiling point, but is just so awful, it's pretty much wonderful. It is a wonderful movie. So anxious to get to it, I don't even want to waste any time. So, this is Dungeons and Dragons. Much like The Room, Troll 2, or the endless library of Schwarzenegger movies, Dungeons and Dragons is one of those rare films that simply gets everything wrong. The casting is wrong, the writing is wrong, the story is wrong, the effects are wrong. Where did I go right? And this strange combination somehow turns out a beautiful, beautiful butterfly of absolute horribleness. It's a bad film of epic proportions, and we're gonna look at it today. Get ready to slap your head in confusion until it goes numb! This is Dungeons & Dragons! So after we see the company that will ironically release Lord of the Rings one year later, we get some opening narration. The Empire of Izmir has long been a divided land, ruled by the mages, an elite group of magic users. Already I'm confused. Those without magic are little more than slaves. And already I don't care. It's pretty impressive for under one minute. So we get our first shot of Ismir as we venture into the secret lair of our villain. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, nothing funny's happened yet, I'm just... I'm just preparing for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just... If you've seen this movie before, you'll start laughing around this part too. he is, Jeremy Irons! Give him a round of applause, everybody! He's gonna bring us so much joy in this hour and a half! You're an attractive scepter, aren't you? Oh, wait, oh, wait, I've seen this! Then Mickey Mouse comes out and steals his big pointy hat and... No, oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry, that's, uh... That's another over-the-top cartoon. Oh boy, it's going to be one of those non-acting days, isn't it? Release him. <laughs> I think they got this dragon on loan from How to Train Your CGI Artist. Come to me. have the power of the immortals. Uh, you get a little something there. You can control dragons. <laughs> You're not right, that, do you? Good. <laughs> I can use every ounce of your rage. <laughs> All right, now you're pouty. Give me pouty. You're a very pouty dragon, yes. Now give me sassy. Oh, you're so sassy, yes. Oh, you're a dirty little kitty, aren't you? <laughs> so this delightful dish of ham and cheese is our villain. The evil sorcerer Profion. Profion. Hmm. Sort of sounds like a Harper medication, doesn't it? Are you tired of orgasming every scene you're in? Why don't you try the mystical wonders of Profion? It's magic in a tiny tablet. Side effects may include overacting, mugging, and inability to pick good movies. I said follow me! But his scepter doesn't work for very long, and thus they have to kill the dragon. No, I am the last one! The dragon's blood leaks into the river, which causes it to suddenly catch fire, because... Dragon's blood does that. Gotta be some twisted magic experiment gone seriously wrong. I'd just love to find a way to give those mages some payback. <laughs> oh yeah, Rindy the Savior. <laughs> and these, I am sad to say, are our two main heroes. A couple of thieves named Ridley, played by Justin Whalen, Snails, played by Marlon Wayans. I'll give you one guess how they casted him for the part. What's that? Chris Tucker isn't able to do it? All right, let's go to the Wayans wheel. <sighs> Call Marlon! 
After talking about breaking into the magic school to steal some supplies, we see that a meeting is going on between Profion and the big council of who gives a fuck. They discuss what is to be done with the controversial views of the Empress. But we have all watched the Empress's growing up, and we have all heard her views on what she considers to be the injustices of the land. <laughs> but she is just a young woman. Young people speak from the heart, not the mind. Ouch! Well, okay, let's hear from the side that's defending the Empress. Oh, that was her side. So that government in Izmir will remain secure. Remove the scepter which lowers above our heads and destroy the threat of revolution forever! Can I get an amen? We will be forced to do whatever we must to protect the strength and the unity of Ismail. What say you? Give us Barabbas! Barabbas! We then cut to... The Empress, played by Thora Birch, discussing why her ideas are being tossed aside and why she's being called the Obama of the fantasy world. All people deserve to be free and equal, whether commoner or mage. I know this within the depths of my soul. Yeah, you can see her memorizing her lines for Ghost World right now. This role's just to work off a speeding ticket. What can I do to stop Profion? You must outsmart him. I must stop ah! Rodas Havrail. With one wave of it, I will topple her. Is this guy just on an all Smurf diet? Seriously, what's with the toothpaste constantly on his lip? See our friend Vilda. Persuade him to give you the scroll of which he speaks, and bring it here to me. So we cut to... What? The Library of the Magic School, and thus enters our hot nerdy chick for the evening, Marina, played by Zoe McLeland. Sorry. That's all right, my dear, but you must understand the seriousness of our task. I know, it's just that I feel like I should be doing something more than shelving books. I understand, Marina. Yes, my Disney princess heart is just begging for something more. I want adventure in the great wild. Pitch me some manticore wing. Oh, that's that's all the development I get, huh? Okay. Off I go. So Ridley and Snails break into the school and look for something to steal. Are you gonna jump? You gonna catch me? I'm gonna catch you. Promise? I promise. Now jump. Now, I'm betting that he's gonna just catch him and absolutely nothing is gonna go wrong at all. Oh, way to play with my expectations, good sirs. Well done, gentlemen, well done. I think that calls for a very affectionate wah-wah. Put it back. Come on, just drop Put it. Put it back. Okay, what about a gold dragon? It's too big. Put it back. But Marina finds the two and tries to capture them. You're thieves trying to rob us. Expelicus comic relievus! That must be the only way she can get guys to come home with her. I'd have to put a feeble mind spell on myself to want to take you home. Snap. Ah! Master! So they're literally roped into the situation as Slurpy Lip here tries to get some information out of the wizard. If you don't tell me which scroll it is, I'll have to kill you painfully. Never! You know, you got something on your- ah! So the bad guys are looking for a map that leads to a magic scepter that apparently can control red dragons. But Marina gets it in time and uses the portal from Sliders to escape, dragging the thieves with her. Come on, you just ran into that garbage! You can see it coming a mile away! Can a body get a moment to see us around here? I order. Hey, it's the missing seven dwarf, Smelly! Uh, do dwarves' helmets stop them from having epileptic seizures? Seriously, him and Darkheart should get together and be clucking buddies! They bring the dwarf with and escape through the sewers, but the captain of the guard says with great speed what he wants his men to do. Post brigades at every sewer, entrance and exit. I want them found. Now! Um, you know, sir, if you said your orders a little faster, we could get them done a little quicker. <laughs> By the way, you got something in there. So the captain puts out a wanted poster for... The Little Mermaid. 
But our heroes blend into their environment by wearing incredibly suspicious black cloaks that nobody else seems to be wearing. Meanwhile, will you stop moving the camera, goddammit? Who the fuck's shooting this, a drunk George Jetson? Jay, stop this crazy thing, help! Jay! All right, so the blue M&M here tells Perfy on why the heroes got away. It was a mistake. It will not happen again. And here's why. <laughs> My head making me do the weird faces and things. Well, Hoyle, now it's going to the nether regions. Not a fan, not a fan. Doyle, maybe if I make some weird, creepy faces, the thing will leave my nether regions alone and I will be happy again. Down now, now I'll never be able to wear a hat and I needed to cover my incredibly bald head and whatnot. For Lyman, I'm Mr. Clean. The moment you deliver me the rod, I'll ensure that he, it, vacate the premises. Now, may I suggest? Okay, we're borderline bad touch territory right now. It's not officially there yet, but it's dangerously close. Now we're in bad touch territory. Yeah, you should call a lawyer guy. <laughs> How much will I bet that's the Christmas card? Season's greetings from Profion and Baldi. Please don't ask why his lipstick is smeared. So our heroes take cover in the most non-suspicious tavern that the city has. Our main characters look over the map and seem to really get into it. Really get into it. Eleanor Vidar! Hey, two down, two more to go! Hey, look, Chapstick here is about to sneak into the place. Do you think you can say your orders a little faster, seeing how time is of the essence? Do not let them escape, or you will suffer a fate far worse than that which hath been inflicted upon me. Don't make me pucker my lips anymore! <laughs> so he enters the place and finds the people he's looking for. Wait, wait for what? They're right there, just snag them! Perfect! Get them! Oh, it's a good thing you waited those couple of seconds or else it would have been a lot harder to let them escape! So Ridley and Marina get out of the map and he informs Snail that he's agreed to help her find the scepter. Which is weird considering how a few seconds ago she wanted them to leave and now she can't imagine doing the mission without him. Ridley, how could you do something like that? <sighs> I don't even get it. What was he indicating when he was pointing at them? Does he think they had sex while they were in the map? Is that even doable? I mean, granted, map sex sounds pretty kinky, but I would hold off. This is dumb. <laughs> All right, so if I got this right, they have to get the Red Scepter in order to control the Red Dragons. But first they have to find this ruby called the Eye of the Dragon, which opens the door that leads to the Red Scepter. But the Eye of the Dragon can only be gotten in this den of thieves, which is ruled by this guy. He won't give you the Eye of the Dragon unless you defeat this evil maze, which nobody has ever conquered. But before you can do that, you have to trade your rubies with the old man in order to upgrade your sword. Once you find the secret passage, you can then work your way through the forest, defeat the evil dragon, get the Triforce of Power, then yeah, yeah, you get the idea. So they follow this purple guy who has an eye vagina on his head and leads him to the Den of Thieves, where Riff Raff from the Rocky Horror Picture Show awaits them. Have you ever heard of the Antius Guild maze? It's just a jump to the left. He has the ruby key they're looking for, but really has to get through this deadly maze in order to win it. I thought this was Dungeons and Dragons, not mazes and monsters. Yeah, tell me if this looks familiar. I think that's bad. Take a look at this scene. He can only step on the square with the red eye where all the other squares will lead to his doom. Remind you of anything else? Remember in the Latin alphabet, Jehovah begins with an I. Yeah, well, they're all eyes. What the hell am I supposed to do? How about this? The closing ceiling with spikes on it. Yeah, again. Ring any bells? 
Well, on the bright side, I can't see them ripping off any more Indiana Jones, but- Oh, come on! That's like an exact replica! Are you even trying to be original? George Lucas must be rolling in his grave! But the soldiers once again come in to seize the heroes. That's who you are, but be prepared for a lesson in pay. There's only room for one overacting bald guy in this movie. You must be joking. I never joke when mages trespass in my guild! By the way, you got something on your... But the captain captures Marina and the other three escape. They come across a tracker who's been working for the Empress, a saucy little elf named Norda. Is that the elf you were drooling over? Well, I wouldn't put it that way. But yeah, that's her. Pretty, huh? They all look alike to me. Whoa! Hey! That's a sight of a dwarf I've never seen before. I mean, wow! So Norda tells the Empress the situation through, get a load of this, a magic mirror. I have unfortunate tidings to report. It seems Profion also seeks the rod. Seek Damodar out. We need that rod. As you wish. You know, she's prettier than you. So we see that the captain is going to interrogate Marina, trying to get some information out of her. Once the questions don't work, he resorts to... this. Okay, this has to be the point where they knew their careers were over. Nobody could come back from a scene this stupid. <laughs> you know, for a movie called Dungeons and Dragons, I've seen a dungeon and a dragon. Couldn't you show us something a little more meaty outside of earwax rape? No, please. Well, how about this? Ridley and Snails break into the place and try to rescue Marina. Norda and all her soldiers just stay behind and watch them. Why? This task they must complete alone. Okay, so Ridley and Snail split up and eventually one of them finds Marina. Hey. <laughs> I was crying. I was afraid I would see you again. But Snails comes across a quick rug and get snatched by lip gloss here just like you thieves always taking things that don't belong to you well that is what a thief does isn't that sort of like saying you painters always painting oh, now a man oh Oh, a wise guy, huh? Yeah! So, again, Snails runs as fast as he can, but the captain of the guards goes as slowly as possible. Hasn't this idiot figured out yet that doing everything slowly doesn't work in his favor? You cannot be serious. He finally catches up to Snails, but Ridley and Marina are there to try and save him. However, it turns out Snails stole the map and tosses it to them. Yes! I know I should feel sorry for him, but you have no idea how annoying this character was. This is incredibly satisfying. No! So Marina uses her magic dust to zap the captain and get them out of there leaving the poor corpse of Wayans behind. We then cut to Profion and the Empress, whose dress looks like it's trying to eat her, as we see them take part in the most important debate in this movie. Underacting versus overacting. Profion, make your case for overacting. I ask you one last time. Will you submit to the ruling of this council? Yes, yes. Now, Empress, make your case for underacting. And as Empress, this is how I decree Izmir shall be run from this day forward. Hmm, well, that certainly was terrible. Profion, let me hear your overacting again. Is now not the time we should act? 
and down with the tyrants! Mm hmm and Empress, you're underacting. You would find the wisdom to see that the path I propose for Izmir is the right one. Hmm, over? Relinquish your scepter. Under? The man who convinced you to take the scepter from me. Well, I don't see any point in choosing. You're both equally terrible! A wonderful performance. That's a lie and you know it. Meanwhile, at the Keebler Elf Tree, we come across an elf played by Tom Baker, who's healing all the soldiers. It wouldn't be so bad, except for some reason, all the soldiers can see during the healing process is this. <laughs> After that, Ridley and Marina talk about the artist formerly known as Snails. I'm sorry about Snails. Yeah. I'm sure you are. He died for a good cause. A good cause. Alright, movie, just keep telling yourself you're trying to make us feel bad for Marlon Wayans. This is easier said than done. In fact, it's not even easily said. You're wrong. No, you're wrong, mage! Just because some mages are evil does not mean they all are. I'm not! I'm not! Did she turn into a goose there? I'm not! I'm not! Huh? I'm not! And now, because you demanded, the all quacking choir. Uh, not! Uh, not! Uh, not! You know, for a mage. Pretty smart. It turns out talking about dead people gets them pretty hot as they share a kiss with each other. Thus we finally get to that cave where the red scepter is held and Ridley uses the ruby to open the door. He comes across a skeleton holding it in his hand. Why do you disturb the rod of Savril? Save the Empire of Ismer. Be warned. Anyone who wields the power of the rod shall suffer a horrible fate. And remember to ride the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. But unfortunately, Minty Fresh Crest shows up and takes the rod away. They all transport back to the Empress where... Something about controlling and fighting dragons is going on. I don't know, just enjoy Irons overacting. Ah! Ah! That was good, but it's no... Can you even understand what he's saying during these scenes? Get up, get up! Move that crossbow! Come down, Destroy them before they reach it! Prepare to fight again! Come on in! Anala! Out of the baloney sandwich! Anala! And on my arm, it's on the Anaya! My destiny! Oh, I just shit my pants. Wait, wait, I can work with it. My character would shit his pants. <laughs> yes, yes, ha ha ha, I just shit my pants, ha 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 So Joan of Larp sees if she can go up there and keep the dragons under control while the battle continues in the tower. Just look at this riveting choreography. Up, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. This is sounding like a cheat code to a Nintendo game. And by the way, you have something on your lip! Oh my god, how come nobody told me? You can run, you ladyship, but you'll never run far enough! Good god, man! Did you graduate from the Dr. Insano School of Acting? Now, a new reign of terror begins! My reign of terror! <laughs> Let their blood rain from us, God! I'm turning into a human vibrator! <laughs> my sister, my daughter, my sister! <laughs> So talented, eh, Mr. Ridley? Oh, I don't know. I always thought he was the talented Mr. Ridley. But Ridley gets a hold of the scepter and destroys it, leaving the dragons to finish him off. Oh my god, there was way too much ham in that actor. 
So the day seems to be saved, I guess. Everyone gives a cheer, our heroes remain heroes, and Snails is still dead. All in all, everything seems good. I'm gonna miss you, pal. And then we end with this scene. Do not question your gift. Your friend awaits you. I don't get it either, folks, but who cares? The movie is over. And... My god, wasn't that a lot of fun? How can anyone not enjoy this film? Its stupidity is at a spectacular level. I've never played Dungeons & Dragons, so I have no idea if it followed it well. But just as a film itself, it's an unbelievable experience. Bad films of this magnitude don't come around enough, and when they do, we have to enjoy them. So if you want a good laugh, rent it today and see what you've been missing out on. You won't regret it. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it. <laughs>